Hi, this is Rick. I wanted to teach you about assembling and use of the washing board and the UV light, uh, which is actually just a light board. So for the board, uh, remove the paper from the board itself and install the brackets with the wing nuts. The brackets are optional. They, it's not going to collapse under its own weight. I just like it for security. So the paper keeps it from scratching. You want to put about two and a half, two to two and a half liters of water in DI water uh, to wash the board with for about 20 minutes, or the book with about 20 minutes. That's a good place to start. You might need 10 minutes, you might need hours. I don't know, it just depends on your book and that's not something I can answer. Cleaning solution I recommend is just DI water for water stains. You can use a Macu clean at about half a percent and you can use Triton X100 surfactant at about two to five percent <clears throat> in that much solution. If it gurgles or makes a weird noise, uh, you should put more water in. It needs to be up to about the line on the side of the of the pump until it stops gurgling. It needs some head pressure. The differences are how level the pump is, how level the, the box is itself, and also um, the, they have about a quarter inch difference in the depth of the impeller on the pump itself. So you want to consider that as well. So then you put the pump behind it. <clears throat> you put the book, uh, you put the liner on the washing board, put the book on the liner, fold a little piece of the liner at the top around the top of the book, keeping the top half of the book completely dry. You do not wet the entire book, just the bottom half at a time because wet paper is weak paper and we don't handle paper that's wet. So then you fold it over to put the, the binder, the, uh, the comic book retaining uh, binder in place. You put it down with a couple clips. You position the arms of the washing board so that they are below the halfway point or maybe just a little slightly above the halfway point of the book. Turn it on for about 20 minutes, I say to start with. That's just a guess. I don't know how dirty your book is. And wash it. And then when you're done, I recommend washing with DI water just to rinse. You know, just you want to go over it once with clean and then try it again and adjust as necessary. And that's it. And then you let it dry. You pull it off, pull the whole, you know, level the thing first. So take the whole washing board out, make it level, pull the, um, pull the or lift the liner off and let it dry just let it air dry don't touch it do anything else to it just let it dry when it's dry to the touch you can then press it and reassemble it or investigate it so there's that and then you can um, do it again see how you like it that's that's the washing mechanism and that should help a lot second is the light assembly for the light assembly you can you first thing you want to do is is you need to assemble the light in the top, the lid of the box. And there's some, some spacers and some bolts for you doing this. So uh, you want to peel the front off. The mirror has a, coat, a protective coating on it, so that mirror assembly. You're going to want to peel just the corners of that off and then pass through the bolts and the spacers and then assemble it at the top and put the bolts on it for this, for this setup. You're also going to have to wire it. I cannot wire it for you. I'm not allowed to wire the assembly. So I'm including these WeGo, uh, the sort of the lift latch connectors instead of wire nuts. So you can put the extension cord in there. It doesn't matter which one goes where. They can go either direction. And you uh, wire that up. And, and then when it's assembled, you plug it in, the light comes on. <clears throat> you do the same thing in the bottom, but the bottom one, you don't need to bolt to the bottom. Just put it underneath. And then you're going to arrange the uh, book so that it's lit from the bottom and the top or just the top if you want, either way at the same time. The plastic is UV tran is light transparent, so it's, gonna, it's going to um, go through it either way. If you want to do peroxide treatment, you can spritz some peroxide. I recommend 12% on just the top only, and then you might have to do the other side. I'll work on a future version that has the book open. You do the whole thing at once. But right now, the light array is just big enough to support each one, just one half of the book at once um, for the number of volts it needs and power it requires. So um, if you have stains, you might want to use peroxide, otherwise I don't recommend it. And you might want to use a mask if you want to cut a mask out to so just do the stain part. So just try the light. And uh, I recommend uh, eight to 12 hours is, a, is the amount of time that that typically needs. But I would stop and check it after you know an hour or so just to make sure everything's all right. So you do the bottom light in the very bottom of the box. You put the you assemble the, you remove the brackets if you have them in there for the washing board into the U shape, put that down, put the book on top of that, put the light in the top, and then you plug both in, let it go. And then you come back and inspect it. And that is 
my friends, that is how it's done. And I'm in Hawaii right now, so I really can't uh, give you a, I don't have a lot of privacy or a lot of ways to write to do this video, so I apologize. And that's all I got for you right now, but this will get updated. Uh, also, one last note is that each prototype's different. Every time I make or construct one of these boxes, there's a slight improvement over the previous one. So you may and probably will get something that's different than what you see in this video, but slightly and still functional and probably better. So I'm trying to reduce the cost. I'm trying to make it work better, I'm trying to make it easier. I'm sourcing different materials from different places to see what's the best and hence the low price for the prototype models. It's completely our expectation. So uh, anyway, I hope that this video finds you well and I'll see you guys uh, back when I get home. All right, take care. Bye-bye. So in this case, I've already stuck the light array to the plastic and I have this capped on tape here, but you might have four light squares, four adhesive squares, just stick it to there. The idea is it's just adhesive. They pull, and I'm peeling a corner back and passing a screw through, and then I'm going to put a nut through. See the, that orange tape is capped on tape. It's a heat resistant, chemical resistant tape I'm using, but in some of the kits you'll have adhesive squares. The idea is you can remove and replace that light assembly and reconfigure it if you want it to be exactly centered. And then I put these spacers on and I'm going to peel this plastic off now that I have it here. Um, the plastic is for transport so it doesn't get scratched. So there we go. Look how nice that looks. That mirrored acrylic it looks really good. It's a thing of beauty. And then that's all I'm going to do is kind of go around and put these bolts in and then add the spacers. So I skipped a little bit ahead here and you can see that I'm just about done putting this into place. And then I put a spacer on each one. And this just gives me, uh, brings the, the UV array a little bit closer to the book so it's equidistant or close to equidistant between the top and the bottom. And it lets some heat escape. Then I just line the box up the lid up with the top here and then I'm just going to put some nuts on the top. And that is just exactly what you think it is. It's just putting those through there and securing this in place. I've tried, this one's been my practice one, so I've tried a couple different that mine has more holes than yours will because I've tried a couple different light assemblies and so this has a lot more holes in it than a normal one would have but I think you get the gist of it. And you can see I'm all done. I screw this in and the light assembly is mounted to the top. There you go. That's what that looks like. And now we just have to wire it up. That's the next part. Now here's the assembly of the light section. So this one has the film on the front. It it's, will be removed later and this is you know, you want to be careful where these wires go. Those wires have to fit between these two cutouts I've made so it fits nice and flush. And then this one has, not the capped on tape, but four adhesive squares that I find work better than the capped on tape if you want to reposition the light for centering. And I've taped the wires down in this case so that they don't get in the way. And what I'm going to do now is take this piece of extension cord, I'm calling it extension cord, twisting the copper up, this little Wego lever latch adapter. All you do is you put one end of the wire in half of this Wego connector, and then you put one half in the other. It doesn't matter which one goes where, you just have to have two Wegos per extension cord. It's way easier than wire nuts, and you know you can flip them up and remove them. You may have a different colored extension cord, you may have a different colored driver. Some have a potentiostat in them for brightness control, some don't. I'm experimenting with a lot of stuff, so yours may or may not look exactly like this. And there we go, lever latch that down. This one came off and then in my case, and there we go, just put that in. So it stops, lever latch it down. I, again, I couldn't wire this for you, I'm not allowed to wire it before I send it. But I can send it to you to wire yourself, and that's what I'm doing. There you go. There's an example of me spinning that up nice and tight, latch it down, and just like that, 
plug it in to the LED array. For our lights, which are not UV lights, I keep saying that, but they're not in the ultraviolet region. And then we'll check it out and see what it looks like. And seems to be working pretty good. Really good, in fact. I like it. And here's what it looks like when assembled just from the top. You put the book down there and there's the mirror on the top. And it looks just like this. That is exactly how it would work. Now, how do you put a book in here? Well, you can put one of these light assemblies on the bottom and the top. I'm just showing the top one in this example. There will be a one with a bottom assembly in the future, but we put our washing board in a U shape in the middle, just like this. Then we put our book on the top. In this case, I have a mask. I'm using this mask as an experiment. This is from a previous experiment that I did, you can see. And I just cut this out in plastic just so I can monitor myself and do my experiment. Again, I would have a light on the bottom, but that's only if the book is dry. This one's wet, so I'm just wet, meaning I'm putting peroxide on it. So I'm just going to do the top half. And I could unfold it and do the whole thing at once, the front the top and the bottom, but it wouldn't fit in this box and the light array would be so big and to make it that big is very expensive. And so it's a, it's a cost control measure. It's two smaller portions which allow flexibility in the way we treat as well. So in this case, I'm spraying peroxide on it, which you can do or not do. It's up to you. I don't recommend it myself unless you need it uh, because it's, it's been shown not to be that significant of a help unless you have a foxing stain or some other stain that you're also trying to remove. Then we just put the lid on the assembly, just like that, and plug it in. And the future ones, of course, will have a switch, but they don't yet because I haven't sourced them in a cheap enough place yet. I'm closing, I don't even have to close the lid, just leave it and come back. And a while on, that's it. That's how you do that part. Pretty easy. Now for the washing board assembly. Well, I'm experimenting with thicknesses and different materials, but in any case, they're going to have four hinges, uh, four places to put brackets, even though you only need to place two of them, and they're going to come coated in paper. The paper is for protection during shipping, and it takes a while to peel it off. I know it's kind of a pain, but it's better than having a scratched and messed up board when it arrives. So you just peel this paper off, and then you just add a couple of brackets, and that's how we get started here. You'll see in just a moment. So I think Nolan gets impatient with me here, my son, and he's helping me <laughs> peel the rest of this paper off. It, it was really cold in my workshop, and so it, it's a lot harder to get off when it's cold. If it's warm, the paper, the sticker comes right off, but it's very difficult to get off when it's about 45 degrees inside. So that was tougher. There we go. Then we have four positions for brackets. We just need to go one across each of the two sections. And I put four just to give you more flexibility where you can put it. So just line the brackets up there. You pass through a bolt and then you just put a wing nut in the back. And that's it. That's really all you got to do. The purpose of the brackets to keep it from collapsing while you're washing or moving it around. I just didn't want to have, I wanted to have some rigidity in the thing. Well, if you have to carry it with a book on it in any case, and this is just insurance. So I put these wing nuts on here and f four is completely unnecessary. And I'm just trying to keep it simple. So um, there's just one across each section like this. And then you can um, get started for washing. And of course, I always struggle a lot more when I'm doing this on camera, fiddling around with it, getting it through there. But I eventually get it, and then you'll see here in a moment. We're all done, and we can start our actual washing example now. So there you go. That's the washing configuration and not the light configuration. 
Now here's the pump assembly towards the back. I'm plugging it in. Your pump assembly may look different than this one. Maybe a different color. You may have a different pump. You may have different segments. We're still in prototype. So here I go. I'm going to put the washing board in front of the pump like this. And I'm going to put the liner on the washing board. This just helps keep the paper from sticking to the washing board and helps it to dry faster. Then I'm putting this book. This is a really obviously a ratty book, but it's nice and tan, gross and old, so it's good. It's a good example. In fact, I think the other side's the top side's dirtier. I'm gonna flip this thing around so we get the dirty S side down. And we only want to do half the book at a time. We don't want to get the whole thing wet because we don't want to be binding or holding or pinching the book by a part that's being wet. So I'm going to wrap this around the top of the book and put my little uh, guard across the top here. I'm not sure what I'm going to call this part of the washing board. The part that goes across the top, I came up with a name for it, but I forgot what it is now. There we go. Just adjusting it just so I have a couple inches across the top so I can turn this back over and I'm going to put this little crossbar here to even out the pressure and I put a couple clamps in place to hold it. It doesn't slip or make a mark. And then I'm going to add my water. There's the, look how clear the water is coming in. This is DI water. You can use distilled water. You can use tap water if it's very clean. Uh, and this is this is two liters. Now this is a nice level surface with a pump that's level in the back. You may need two and a half or even maybe three liters to keep your to get your pump enough head pressure to work. There we go. I'm just going to line these up, you know, about half the book down, just nowhere near the top, so I don't want to put the part that's under pressure to get that wet. I'm going to line this up. Again, yours may be different color, different lengths, different sizes, different size nozzles. I'm experimenting, take my initial photo here. <laughs> then we turn it on, see what happens. There it goes. And we've begun washing the book. Okay, there it goes. Now, what does it look like here? We've been washing for, I think this one I only did 10 minutes. You see how it's kind of foaming at the bottom? That happens sometimes. I'm not sure why. Something in the paper it comes out makes the water foam up a little bit. I'm just going to remove the clamps. I'm peeling off. This. I'm pinching. Notice I'm pinching the paper against this part and I just let it dry. I have a little drying rack here that I've bought from the kitchen store and it just I just let it sit. That's all I have to do. Let it air dry. Now I can put it in an oven of course. I let it air dry. When it's done I'll press it in my press and then see how it looks. This guy is I'm just testing out how terrible this paper is in this particular book. So anyway, like I said, we just let this sit and dry and we evaluate and we do it again if we need to and we don't if we don't. But always watch it the first few seconds or even do a few spot tests with a Q-tip just to make sure that there's no nothing that's too overly soluble in water on your particular book before you get started. So you remember what, what this water looked like going in. Here's what it looks like coming out. This wasn't much time. I think this was only a 10 minute clean in front of this book and you can see the difference in the color of the water coming out. It's pretty nasty now, honestly. If you look at it, you can see that it's pretty gross. <laughs> or just a few minutes. That's what came out of that book. So yeah, it's not, it's not pretty at all. And this is what the book looks like. It looks, you can see in the edges, it's looking what's drying, but it looks much whiter around the edges. Of course, the other side's the top is the UV side, but the light side. But yeah, you can see the edges. Look how much whiter it is. 
when it dries, the whole thing's going to be... And this is, here's the sort of unwashed corner. But you'll see that. And this is the light corner. So where it stains at, the light will help out. Where it's just general tanning, the, the washing and dirt, the tanning helps quite a bit. You can see around that. Well, that's it, folks. I hope this video helped you at least a little bit. And there will be more videos coming, of course. I'm just not home very often uh, lately to make really good ones. So I apologize for the format and for me not being there and having to narrate some older video. But it's a good start anyway, and look for more to come. And I really hope that you enjoy the washers as they start to come out pretty soon. And we'll get them made a lot faster soon as well. So anyway, take care. I hope to see you guys all uh, around more often. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoy the Mackie Cubes. Take care. Bye. See ya.